Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's a TGI Friday. Come on. Welcome to this Friday this Faith Room. Get up on in here. Come in. Come on. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing? What yes. up, y'all? What up? It's Friday. What's up? Hey, we made it, y'all. Amen. We made it. <laughs> yes. Patrick, if I could sing it, I would. It's another day's journey. What are you? <laughs> and I'm glad. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I'm glad about it. Come on, y'all. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad about it. I am glad. Yes, sir. You woke yeah. me up this morning. And yes. I'm glad. Yes, sir. I'm so, so glad, glad he did. Mm -hmm. Come on yes, in here, y'all. I don't know yes, the song. Oh, it's an encourage know. myself Friday. Amen. Yes. yes. <laughs> encourage myself Friday. Come on in, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Y'all know what to do. Declare your day. And then what did they do, Kim? They got to tag. And what? Share, girl. <laughs> that, is tag. that is sharing, isn't it? Tag and share. Isn't it the same thing? Well, you, you tag when you put people in the comments. You share yeah. when you send it out to your page. Oh, Help yeah. a prophet. Help a prophet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now. I'm, I have had a horrible two weeks. I'm barely. <laughs> But you up in here, Kim. Amen. You know the yeah. You made it. I you survived. Have made it. <laughs> hey y'all, let me know if I freeze. Okay. Let me know if I freeze because I'm yeah. praying uh, that I don't. But it's gonna be a great day. Yeah. Well, you're doing good so far. Doing Thank you good. so much. Yeah. KJ, what's the word today, man? Man, it's a great day to be alive. Amen. And we, yes, we made it all the way to Friday. We are in the month of May. Yes, May the first week of May. And so it's, it's a feat in itself. Great day to be alive, man. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and Mother's Day is coming up this weekend. We're praying for yes those individuals who whose mothers have, have gone on, uh, yes. and, and and really keeping them encouraged. Uh, but celebrating all the mothers, uh, we want to tell you in advance, Happy Mother's Day to yes, you. Happy Mother's Day. What's up, moms? Yeah, Mother's Day, y'all, is hard for me because yeah. it's, my mom is gone. And, and I know a lot of people like Pastor Nate, look, y'all, we got to encourage each other, right? Yes. Yeah. Because, you know, Mother's Day was a special time, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. listen, if your mother is still alive, your grandmother, man, cherish those moments. Yes. I tell y'all that yes. all the time, man. Cherish those moments with them Yeah. because you never know, KJ, Kim, yeah. you never yeah. know. Yeah. Well, yes. I mean, you're, having your parent in the land of the living is very special, and it's tragic when that is not the case. I have friends who are going through that as well. If their, parent, if their mom isn't here anymore, it's very oh, hard. Yes. All right, y'all. We're going to do this real quickly. We're going to tag and share our guests having a little technical issues, but if y'all begin to pray, Pastor Moses Herring, I think he's yeah. coming in now. There he goes. He's in. He's backstage. So we're going to yes. get him in in just a moment. Y'all are in for a major treat today. Uh, my brother and friend, uh, Chicago, Illinois area. In fact, Creek, Illinois, right outside of Chicago, Faith Movers Church. I need you to go Google and follow Faith Movers Church uh, doing powerful things there in that area. I've had the honor of, of seeing the campus there at Faith Movers, seeing what Pastor Moses Herring is doing. Uh, his brother is my best friend, uh, John Herring. And in fact, let me tag the whole Herring clan right now. Yes. Um, and we're going to have a great time today, y'all. We've been talking about don't sell yourself short. So come on in here. Yes. Let's get ready for a great time today. So, Kadrick, yes. I'm going to share to my page. Y'all could talk to the people. Yeah. Yes. So it's Friday, and y'all y'all know today, later on today, we're going to be doing, giving you the opportunity to give mm -hmm. to the gas giveaway. We'll be doing yes. gas giveaway in five different states. Uh, and I'm just, I'm just honored to be a part of this process because uh, I believe it's going to be something, well, I know it's going to be something that's going to be a blessing to so many, yes. uh, you know, with the gas prices going up uh, consistently and staying up and it stayed there. <laughs> right. <laughs> right there. Right there. So, yep. so you get a chance to be a blessing because Jesus, you know, uh, uh, it, it was stated 
that that Jesus said that is more blessed to give yes. than it is to receive. Amen. Right. So you know how it is when you're on the the uh, receiving end. Yeah, man. Uh, and 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 sometimes it, it causes you to have a lot of humility. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's embarrassing. Yeah. Uh, but but you know when you receive it, it's a blessing to you. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah. we want you to have the opportunity to give later on in the show to where uh, you get a chance to be able to give to support this. And we're going to be uh, posted up at uh, next weekend at five different locations in five yes. different states uh, yes. being a blessing to people. And so we want you to be a part of that. You get to be a part of changing yes. somebody's life. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Latoya said faith strong. Uh, than my fears Friday. That's Amen. what's up. That's what's Amen. up. That's what's, what's up, up. Portia Gaffer, Las Vegas in the building. Portia, good, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Big, big D's tagging folk this morning. Tony Gant tagging this yes. morning. Yes. Tag, 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 tag. There's power in the tag. There power is. in the tag. Y'all power. Power. That's why I remembered it. I was like, there's power in the tag. That's why I remember that for. Absolutely. Power. Y'all, we're at 188. Let's get to 200. We'll get Pastor Moses in at 200, yes. y'all. And uh, you're going to be blessed today. Get something to write with. Latonya Hill, good to see you this morning. Mm-hmm. Tina Anderson, that's it. Uh, Bianca oh, yes. putting it in there. Faith Room Gas Giveaway. If you're not going to be on a, a, the whole show, go on and sow that seed now. Amen. I've sown my seed. The facilitators have sown their seed. Yeah. Listen, guys, we're going to help so many people on next yes. Saturday, man. It's going to be a blessing. Praise so God. let's do what Also, we do. I'm sorry. If, if ahead, there's any first timers in the room, uh, we want you to uh, yes. put a one yes. in the comments if you're first time, if this is your first time, very first time uh, coming to the faith room, where whether you were tagged or you just happened to scroll across and you saw us, we want you to go ahead and type a one in the comments and tell us where you're watching from. Yes. Tell it. us where you're watching from because we want to greet you and make sure you know that you're welcome in the room. And definitely you'll we'll be coming back. Absolutely. Yeah. They will be back. That's the word. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's go and get to 200, y'all. I'm tagging on my end, KJ. We're going to start in three minutes. We're going to start. We always start at the 10 to 15 minute mark. Give yeah. Pastor Moses some time backstage, and we're going to be ready to roll. I'm tagging on my end. Let me tag. Good morning. You my good morning, Pearly. <laughs> good morning, Derwin. I just want to say good morning because I haven't been in for a while. So I'm so happy to yeah. see everybody. Yeah, we're glad to see you, Kimberly. I'm so happy to see everybody. Kimberly, oh, we, we, Herman had a comment. He said, "Is keeping my sanity Friday," and I agree with that. Come on, Herman. <laughs> hey, Pastor Herman, you got this, brother. You got this, man. Yes. What y'all got up for the weekend, Kim? Uh, KJ, what y'all got up, man? Y'all doing anything fun? Uh, I don't have anything fun. I, I'm doing a lot of content planning over the weekend. Okay, gotcha. uh, you know, because things are a little different for me now. So, uh, so that's what I got coming up for the weekend. It's it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a good weekend though. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, just just in, in excited about just making it to the weekend, man. Right? <laughs> and I know that's right. I know that's right. Y'all well, come on and tag. Let's get them in. Ken, what you got up this weekend, sis? Well, I'm excited. The house. I'm excited this weekend because my mom and my grandma are coming up this weekend to ce- celebrate with, you know, we're going to have our own little Mother's Day. So I'm ex- so excited. Too. They'll be the first time coming to visit me. So I'm going to wow, cook. Yeah, but, I, you know, I'm like, <laughs> we'll see what I'll make. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the best cook. What's your signature dish, dish Kim? Signature dish? What's your signature dish? I like Uber Eats. They have a lot of wonderful. (laughs) (laughs) You just said you're going to cook. Now you're talking about you. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to cook. Now, you need some ladies. I keep repeating these things. No. (laughs) Okay. So, so, so are you cooking, cooking this weekend or are you ordering Uber Eats? Because my grandmother gave me this crazy, she was like, well, you know, I don't eat everybody's cooking. That includes the oh, like, Kim, Kim, Kim. I need somebody to take Kim out. She need to get out. <laughs> I'll make it spaghetti. Okay. Oh, help me, Jesus. Help spaghetti me, Jesus. is good. I like spaghetti. 
Y'all welcome Larry Hill, San Diego, California. Y'all welcome. What's going on, Larry? Room. Welcome to the room. Awesome. Welcome, Larry. That was my daddy's name. All right. Yeah. Ladies, y'all fly Kim in. She need to turn up one time in her life. One time. Oh, no. I turn yeah. up. Why y'all keep perpetuating that? I turn up. I just, my turn up is it's different. It's different. <laughs> so. What's that song, Kat? Different. Yeah. So, Good morning, Lady Rose. Good morning, Donna Hill. Good morning, Lacoya. Y'all welcome, Washington. Sandra Washington. Sandra Washington. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, Sandra. Good to see you this morning. Welcome to the room. Y'all welcome these first timers today. Come on, we're tagging yes. away. We're tagging away. You will be back. Amen. This is yes. true. Yes, we're at 214 live right now, y'all. Come on, I'm going to start at 250. We're going to start at 250. Come on, let's go. And then we're going to get Pastor Moses in. And uh, 250, y'all, we're going to start. 225. Let's go. 25 more people. Oh, come on. We can do it. We can do it. All right. Oh. 25 more people. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and like this particular show right now. Yes, please. Like this particular show right now. All right. If you're there in the YouTube world, I just tagged. Let me tag my brother, John. Let me tag Miss Lisa. Let me yes. tag the Heron family. Uh, Pastor Moses. I love garlic bread. Y'all will talk about garlic bread. I can. I like that. I'm gonna add that with the spaghetti. Yeah. I miss you too, Hughes. <laughs> yeah. Let me see, John. Let me get John in here. Yeah, I'm tagging away. Come on, y'all. Yes. Tag, yes, tag, yes. tag. It compounds. It's gonna be great. Yeah. All right, John. Yeah, keep tagging. Here. Keep tagging. Um, you know, it's. It's been, this week has been really good. This week yeah. has been really good. Um, Sonny, that's my pastor. You know, Rep represent your pastor, Sandra. <laughs> oh, girl. Right. This week has been really good. I, I enjoyed uh, Brother Witcher, Pastor Witcher. Yo, man. Yeah, man. I enjoyed uh, Pastor Pointer. Yeah. Uh, it was so good. Who else? Did we have any other guests this week? Uh, Witcher, Pointer, were, and, and Pastor Moses. These are, they are the only three this okay. week. Okay, good deal. I really okay. liked Pastor Pointer when he was talking about the adversaries and then you have your abandoners and then you have your betrayers. I like how he broke that down. I like yeah, that. Phenomenal that teacher. Good. Yeah. Philip Pointer is a phenomenal teacher. We appreciate him so much. Y'all listen, I'm honored to know Pastor Moses Herring. Uh, such a great brother. Um, like I said, he, he, uh, his brother, Pastor John Herring, who pastors in Macon, Georgia, um, uh, is a great friend of mine, best friend, best man in my wedding. And Moses uh, and John, their father, pastor for many, many years. Um, and we just created a great bond through the years. And pastor Moses is there in Illinois, Crete, Illinois, uh, at the Faith Movers Church. I want you to go ahead and follow him. In fact, many of you are going to follow him after today because uh, he's just an uh, intelligent brother, practical brother but a brother who loves the lord his scholarship is certainly on point uh so you many of you know him you've heard him uh but this is his first time in the faith room mm -hmm. and i want to shout out his wife uh lady lucretia god bless you woman of god if you're watching appreciate oh, you all you're doing in the ministry there uh, with with pastor uh, moses so Listen, y'all, let's welcome, let's show him some mad faith room love so he'll know how we do it up in here, y'all. Yeah. Let's give a big hand to my brother, my friend. Come on, y'all, Pastor Moses Heron. Come on, guys, let's make some noise. Let's go, let's go. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> welcome, Pastor Heron. Pastor Moses. So good to be here, man. It is so great to be here with you, Pastor Nate. Man, I'm so honored. You know, we go way back. Matt, yes, sir. So to be here with you all and the whole team, I'm just so honored. You know, I've been following the faith room for a long time. So I've been seeing movement. I've been seeing how y'all been just moving and popping. And so I'm just really honored to be here, man. I'm just so grateful. Man, thank you so much. And Pastor, thank you for just, man, who you are to the body of Christ, man. I, I am just, man, thankful for your heart, man. And just uh, to see how God is blessing. Y'all, faith movers. Uh, making move. I want y'all to go see it for yourself. I know people be talking about other ministries, but go go see it for yourself. Uh, but Pastor Moses, we're talking about this idea of don't sell yourself short, man. And we want to release you today. 
uh, to be a blessing to the body of Christ, man. We're at 245, y'all. Let's get to 300 plus today. Uh, so, man, in your own way, we may stop you. Now, Kadrick up top, these are the facilitators. Kadrick is um, in Little Rock. Kim Hall <clears throat> is in Philadelphia. Our co-host is out today on assignment. Uh, Cherie, there she is right here. Uh, she's watching. Uh, that's our hey, co-host. Uh, but, man, we may stop you. If it gets good, Pastor KJ may walk off. It's not that you're doing bad. If he walks off. You're doing good. You're doing good. That means you're doing good. So, facilitator, let's go ahead and mute ourselves, man. And then, Pastor Moses, have your way, man. Let God use you as we prepare to be blessed. Go ahead, man of God. Well, once again, Pastor Nate, man, I want to just thank you for this opportunity. To all my faithful and family, man, I'm just so happy and honored to be here. I got to give a shout out. I know I got some faith movers watching. So I want to shout out to all my faith movers family, man. Please tag and share so we can try to get as many people as possible in to uh, hear what we're talking about today. You know, I was kind of tripping on this whole theme of don't sell yourself short when we first talked about it, Pastor Nate. And immediately, you know, I began to think about, you know, some reasons in life why we actually sell ourselves short. Uh, I begin to kind of trip on that. You know, why is it that sometimes in life, you know, we take ourselves for granted? You know, we don't have as much confidence in ourselves as we should. And I thought about uh, a couple of reasons I want to share with the family today. I think the, one of the first reasons that we sell ourselves short is because of our self-image. You know, our self-image is how we see ourselves. Oh, no. Oftentimes, people have a bad self-image of themselves. Uh, they don't see themselves in a proper view, or let's put it this way, they don't see themselves in a God view. They don't view themselves the way God views them. And so as a consequence, sometimes I think when you don't see yourself like God sees you, then you open yourself up to the spirit of intimidation to enter into your life. And I think for a lot of people, they're selling themselves short because that spirit of intimidation has entered into their lives because they don't have a proper view of themselves or they don't see themselves like God sees them. You know, I think about a story in Numbers 13, you know, the infamous story where Moses sent out 12 spies to the promised land. And, you know, the Bible says how the 10 came back with a bad report. They said, no way we can get the promised land. There are giants in there. And watch their self-image. They say, we were like grasshoppers oh. in their now, what's amazing about that story, if you go to Joshua chapter 2, verses 8 to verse 10, it talks about when the children of Israel finally made it to the promised land and they encountered Rahab. Rahab was telling them how afraid that the people in the promised land were of the children of Israel. Now, catch the way that spirit of intimidation works. The enemy will deceive you so much that the enemy will have you being intimidated by things and people that are actually intimidated by you. Come on and here, man. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's manipulation. It's mental conspiracy. And so that if your self-image is not right, it'll have you tripping and being intimidated by people who are really uh, intimidated by you. And I think that's one of the issues even today with social media. So much false advertisement going mm. on that uh, is giving people the spirit of insecurity and our self-image is not right. So we're selling ourselves short. So number one, I think we're selling ourselves short because of our self-image. But number two, because of scriptural ignorance. Talk more. Ignorance. In other words, some people are selling themselves short because of bad theology. You will be surprised at a lot of believers who really believe that God does not want them to be blessed. Talk you know, a lot of people who grew up in church, but they believe the more I suffer, the more I go through, the more holy that makes me, the more humble that makes me. And it is because of an ignorance sometimes that we have biblically and scripturally that it messes us up, our self-image up. And even if I may say this, I want to start no trouble, but some people act like the only thing God wants to do for them is save them. Come on, uh, Moses. Some preachers preach like that. That the only thing God wants to do for you is save you. And of course, we know God 
wants us saved, salvation. But I like to always say that Jesus came that we may have two types of life. Eternal life, John 3, 16, and abundant life, John 10, 10. Come on and here, I, Doc. We don't put balance in that. You know, if we don't teach people not only how to get saved, but how to live a productive life, how to be happy, how to be empowered, we will do them a misjustice and put them in a position where they'll begin to sell themselves short. So I think it's about some image, scriptural ignorance. And then here's the last one, which I think is very important. Some people are scared of improvement. Talk Moses. Some people, and this is so true. Sometimes you can struggle so long that success seems abnormal. Sometimes you can be in a struggle for so long or just be grinding so long that uh, coming out of that season can make you feel a little dysfunctional. And so what, what happens is you end up sabotaging your success. So it seems like when things begin to go well, when things begin to go good, sometimes intentionally or unintentionally, you'll begin to mess it up. You will do something. You'll begin to just doubt and have worry in there that you can't operate and walk in, I think, everything that God has for you. And I think there are so many people God is trying to elevate, but they keep sabotaging it because they're more oh, comfortable man. in that place of struggle than they are in that place of success that God has for them. And so I think all these things are so critical to us selling ourselves short. We know that the Bible, Jesus said, once again, John 10, 10, I've come that you might have life and that you may have it more abundantly. That's the will of the Lord. That's the will of Jesus. However, if our self-image is not there, if we have a bad theology, we think God wants us to suffer, if we are scared to get to the next level because we feel as if I don't want to be accountable to the next level. I don't want those expectations. I'm scared of improvement. Then we will continue to sell ourselves short, which I believe is a very dangerous thing. And so Moses, let me ask you this. Patrick, y'all can unmute yourself. You said that there are people who we are intimidated by, bro, who are actually intimidated by us. Absolutely. Yeah. Can you yeah. push that a little bit, man? Because some folk. They're, they're walking around inferior, feeling inferior when really they have more power than they're giving off. Absolutely. absolutely. Can you talk about that a little bit more? Absolutely, because that's a real thing. Oftentimes we are walking around insecure, intimidated, thinking that, you know, someone is better than us at that. Someone is, is doing this better than we're doing it. You'll be, as, you'll be surprised the people who are watching you on the download. You'll be surprised at the people who are secretly on your timeline. You, you'll be surprised at the people who are really watching your every move. See, God has people in the backside of the desert all the time. You know, God always got somebody in the bullpen. And sometimes the preacher can't pitch right because he's so concerned about the person in the bullpen. And I'm just saying, oftentimes in life, the people who we are intimidated by are the very people that are watching us, that are intimidated by us, and so the enemy, what he does is he makes us feel as if we are inferior to them so that we'll never walk in the real anointing and walk in the real giftedness that we have been given. And so we have to have a level of self-confidence and confidence in God and who God said we are. If God said we the head and not the tail, we got to be fully persuaded of that. If God said he wants us to have abundant life, we've got to be fully persuaded of that and not be intimidated you know, by people, by setbacks, by problems, by any of that. Wow. Somebody say, I've been encountered, I've encountered inbox messages that have shocked me. And yes, I'm being watched. That's good. Wow. That's good. Tell the no, truth. Go ahead, KJ. Yeah. You somebody's being watched. I'm telling you, somebody right now are watching every move you get. Some people are stealing your stuff and you don't even know they're stealing it. <laughs> <laughs> And God's going to make it right. You might get mad yeah. about it. You might try to sue them. Don't worry about it. In due season, God's going to make it right. And that's a word for yeah. somebody. Wow. Just keep in due that's season, Moses. So, so you, you talked about that wrong theology, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so what do you say to somebody who is struggling right now and they're, they're having this, this battle between what you just said wow. and what they've been taught? Yeah. yeah, you know how how do you help them be able to to 
convert their mind to or, or their understanding to be able to receive the fact that God wants them to really have abundant life and a blessed life. Yeah, I think two things. I think exposure is important. Talk. You know, some people have only been exposed to what they've been taught in their box, mm. what they've been taught in their denomination, if you will, what yeah. they've been taught in their religious set. And so they think that's the end all be all. But sometimes you have to open yourself up to exposing different things, different teachings. And sometimes we can do that for people in a very, um, you know, humble way. You know, we can say, hey, listen to this. I think this will bless you. I, I thought, of, I, you know, I heard this message. I thought about you. Won't you listen to it and um, tell me what you think about it? So exposure is important. But secondly, being an example. And I think that's most important. When we are in close relationship with people, just being an example, they're being able to see our lives, yeah. seeing the truth of our lives, seeing the faith on us. And when they ask us, well, you know, how did you get that? How did that happen? Not being ashamed to give glory to God and telling them about the source. So sometimes we have to exemplify what abundant life looks like. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Paul said, this phone wasn't done in the corner. Sometimes you got to get out of the corner and not that you're bragging, not that you're being arrogant, but you got to be able to be an example to people to let other people know what is possible for them. Yeah. So, the, so, so do you do you think that that some of that is because some of us are too afraid to shine for the glory of God because we're saying, well, I don't want nobody to know what I have. I don't want to feel like I'm bragging. I don't because they're they're selling themselves short. Absolutely. And you know what I've learned? That whether somebody being arrogant or humble has to do with the heart. You know, people That's so say good. one person can do it with a bad heart. And you can tell, you know, they're being arrogant. They're trying to make somebody feel bad for what they don't have. They're, you know, bragging. But then somebody else can do it and you can sense that their heart is right. You know, That's they're not good. doing it to feel bad, but they're doing it to try to be that example, to try to show you what is possible, you know, for you. And so I think, you know, that's so important. We can't, I know people that hide their blessing. You know, I know people that God has been good to, but they have to hide it. They can't let people know about the favor of God. And when we do that, uh, we are not giving God glory. Jesus said, you know, who lights a, a candle and put it under a bush? You know, so that our Father in heaven can be glorified. And if our heart is right, that's our motive for our Father to be glorified. We need to get a heart check when it's about us, when it's about trying to puff up ourselves. That's when we got to check ourselves, I think. That's good. Man, push a little bit more. I know you got some more content. And uh, yeah. somebody say y'all here a little static. Well, hopefully it's not that bad that uh, I don't hear any static. It's a little, I hear it. It's a little reverb. Okay. Sounds good. But we're going to keep pushing, though. Go ahead. Yeah. We'll just so mute ourselves, facilitators, to make sure it's not us. Go ahead, well, Pastor Moses, push a little bit, man. Absolutely. So, you know, I was tripping on that. You know, I think those three reasons are critical to why sometimes we sell ourselves short. But, of course, we're in the faith room. So we're not here to beat you down. We're here to lift you up. And so, you know, I, I begin to think about, you know, what are the ways then that we can stop selling ourselves short? We know how we do it, but, you know, how can we overcome that? And I think a couple of things are important. Number one, We've got to participate in self-care. It's very important. Self-care. Uh, I always say this. we got to learn how to take care of ourselves. Because at the end of the day, a dead you can't take care of nobody. You know, a dead you can't help nobody. So we have to learn how to take care of ourselves. And what I learned is, is this. The more you take care of yourself, the more you know about yourself. You know, recently... Uh, I just came off my first time ever as a pastor doing this, my first sabbatical. I took a whole month off from pastoring and from leading. Now, our church has been going for 10 years straight, 10 years, almost 11 years in June. We've been pounding, grounding, trying to build a church. And it was just so much that I had never been going for the church more than a week. I've always would come back because I've always wanted to make sure that God's work is going. But this, this year, favor happened. I was able to get a grant. Somebody blessed me to go on a, a 30 day sabbatical. They paid for it and everything from a foundation. It was a grant, favor of God. And, and that's a, that 30 days of sabbatical and rest, 
I learned so much about Moses. I learned so much about Moses that I couldn't hear, that I couldn't discover when I was in the grind. For many of us, there are, there's creativity that's ready to be awakening. For many of us, revelation, God wants to speak to us, but it's going to start with us taking care of ourselves. So many things that God wants to reveal to us about our future, but because we're in the hustle and bustle of life, we're so busy, we can't hear God clearly. Sometimes we have to rest, take care of ourselves so that we can learn what our spiritual gifts is. We can learn what our strengths are that will give us that confidence to be able to walk in the authority that God has called us to. And so I want to challenge everybody today, take some time at whatever level you can. Now you may can't do 30 days. Go down to Holiday Inn, get you a hotel, go to Holiday Inn, order you a pizza uh, and just chill, eat, have a good time, whatever level you can. We all have to learn how to practice the principle of the Sabbath and take care of ourselves. You know, get our feet cracked. You know, get a massage, something that we can do that's going to relax ourselves. But I'm telling you, when you begin to relax your spirit, you begin to hear things that's been held up for many years. So number one, I think, if we're going to overcome selling ourselves short, we've got to participate in self-care. Number two, this is very important for somebody, we've got to get a strategy. We have to get a plan of action. You'll be surprised at how many people are selling themselves short because they have not tapped into a strategy. Can I tell you this? One strategy, one revelatory word from God, one plan of action can change your life forever. I mean, we see it all through scripture. I mean, we see it from the Old Testament to the New Testament in hard times. David finds the Amalekites. God gives him a strategy. Hey, plan of action, pursue them. All the time, God will give you a plan of action in order to help you get to where he wants you to go. Because what I've learned is this, a strategy will give you hope. You can be jacked up from the fire, feeling terrible and hopeless. But if you get a revelation, if you get a strategy, that thing may not be fully manifested yet. But just the fact that you got a plan, that you're working, it gives you hope to keep on pushing and to keep on trucking. And that's my prayer for somebody. Even today, somebody will begin to hear from God. They would rest and allow God to reveal to them the strategy for their next faith move, if you will, for their next big step they got to take. And I like to say, once you get that plan, you got to work the process of that plan. If you don't mind, can I go through that? That process of a plan, you know? Uh, number one, I think in order to get the plan, you got to go through a season of meditation. Once again, that's that self-care. That's meditating. Getting all by yourself in the Hebrew vernacular, meditate means to speak to oneself. So just literally being in a place where you're quiet and reminding yourself of God's word, reminding yeah. yourself of what God has said about you, meditating quietness, just to get to that place of biblical meditation, you'll get a revelation. Now, once you get the revelation, the next season is preparation. You got to begin to prepare. You got to begin. So many people are just moving without preparation. People ask me all the time, did you wake up one morning and start Faith Movers Church? No, me and my wife, we prepared for it, man. We had to fill out paperwork. We had to get a team together. We had to prepare for what God is doing in our life. So after your meditation, you get the revelation, go through preparation, and then go through a season of administration. Start organizing your life. You know, start putting some things in order. Start doing some things to get the plan that God has for you. You can begin to see it come to pass. And here's another one. You have to also go through a season of determination because yeah. anytime you got a plan, there will be persecution. Anytime you got a plan, the enemy will come after you. But we have to be determined to keep on pushing and not to get weary and well doing. And for all my praisers, the next step is going through a season of celebrating. <laughs> come on, man. Sometimes you got to praise God before the plan comes to pass. Sometimes you got to learn how to give God praise for what He's going to do. You got to praise like it's already done. And so that season of celebration is important because it keeps your mind stayed on him. It keeps you in the flow. And then I think once you do all of those things, the last step is manifestation. Your plan will come to pass because if God gave it to you in the meditation step, he's not a God that he should lie. Yes. In yeah. your part, God will do his part and you will see your plan come to pass. And once your plan has come to pass, now you're at a state to give God glory for what God has done. And so I would say, Pastor Nate, you got to have that strategy. Yeah, man. 
somebody I'm praying that God gives you a strategy. And here's the next one. You got to have support. You got to have people around you who's got your back. Uh, you got to have everybody needs a pastor. Everybody needs a mentor. Everybody needs somebody that yeah. can speak your life. And let me tell you this. In 2022, you got to connect with certain type of people. Learn how to connect with successful people. People who are already where you want to be. People who've already taken the steps you want to take. Connect with successful people. Connect with secure people. People that won't get jealous when they see you go up. Right. People that tolerate your elevation. People that you can almost brag to and you can tell what God is doing in your life and not have to be worried about them trying to check you for being arrogant. People that are secure in what God is doing in their life and in your life. Could connect with sin people who are sincere. Sincere people. Serious people. It's time out for games. You can't be in relationships oh, that one way and then act another way when we get away from each other. I got to be around sincere people and then I got to be around spiritual people. People that's going to remind me of what God has said over my life. People that can pray with me. People that can encourage me. I think that is so important in that area of support because in order to stop selling yourself short, you got to have people around you that can constantly speak life into you, speak encouragement into you. It's everything. And here's the last one. You got to sow. You got to sow. Because I've learned that when you begin to bless others, God will begin to bless you. And that's even so important with this great outreach event that you all are doing with the gas giveaway. Can I encourage your viewers? Sow something, man. You make, you're sowing for gas. Gas is what you put in the car to help a car move. If you sow into somebody's movement, God's going to give you a harvest of movement. If you sow to help somebody else move, then God will give you a harvest to help you move to the next level. So sowing is everything. You got to be willing to pour into others so that others can pour into you. And I'm telling you, the more you sow, the more you feel better about yourself and stop focusing on you know, your inadequacy, but you, you can see what God's doing for others and position yourself to receive a heart. I hope all of that makes sense, Pastor. Man, listen, absolutely. Listen, I'm- uh, That was so good. So much in this. Yes. I'm hearing yes. some feedback, KJ. Open up, I guess when I talk, open up, KJ, the Q&A, man. If there are any questions y'all have for Pastor Moses, we have 319 people live right now. Uh, we can't get 319 questions, but I want you to go ahead, type in your question for Pastor Herring. What a word today, man. Yes. Health care. So yes. That hit me all in my face. Yes. So good. Um, so oh. type in your questions, any comments. Uh, we want to go ahead and, and and open up the Q&A right now. Pastor Moses, man, I'm just, I'm marinating it. You you, you spoke to my heart today, man. Um wow. Miss Gooden say, I needed this today. Mm -hmm. uh, God bless you. Yeah. Uh, you. It hit me. So, Pastor Moses, while I'm waiting to type that answers in, what do you think it is that gives us the ability to hear clear, clearer when we when we begin to pull away and take care, care of ourselves? Well, that's a good question because hearing from God is so important for your next level. Um, you can't go on your own accord. You have to hear from God. And this is where many people struggle. I don't know if I'm hearing right. I don't know if it's God or not. I don't know uh, if I'm hearing God, but how do I do it? And so you have to make self-care a lifestyle because sometimes I'm still in my own life. I got so busy grinding, preparing messages, just working, doing meetings, that to be honest, sometimes it's very difficult to hear from God. And so you can't hear from God Sometimes you move on your own accord or you move off of your natural ability. The Bible says that can be dangerous because there is a way that seems right to a person, but the end thereof can lead to destruction. So in all of our ways, we have to acknowledge God. So this is why self-care is important, because sometimes when you quiet your spirit and you relax, that's when you can hear from God. You remember that story of Elijah when he was overwhelmed and, and he was having trouble hearing? The first thing God told him to do is take a nap, rest. Mm -hmm. Because if yes. you're resting, that you'll be able to hear God clearly. And I really feel that there are some people right now who are overwhelmed. There are people who are right now who's in the grind and they need to hear something because they're at a place where they need to make a next move. And their next move is critical for their success. If that's you, 
you're going to have to take you a weekend, take some couple of days off work. You got to start coughing, take some days off, some sick days. Do what you got to do because you got to get to a place where you can quiet your spirit, get all yeah. alone, you know, put some, and I'm saying, you know, make it over spiritually. Go to a movie. Sometimes I've heard from God in the movie theater. Sometimes one of, one of the best sermon series I've ever done in our church was called The Gospel of Motown. I preached about the Gospel of Motown, all the Motown songs. I kind of put them in a sermon, but and it, and it just blessed our church. But I got that series while I was at a movie watching it in the dark. Just sometimes it's in your relaxation, you get your revelation. So I think that's so important. We have to be disciplined to do it and not just do it one time. But at least we ought to practice the Sabbath that one day out of the week, we're taking time to cut off the rest of the world. At least one day. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. God never designed us to work seven days a week. He only designed us to work six days. And if we push it, eventually we break down. We yeah. can't hear. We can't be spiritual. We can't be comfortable. So we got to hear from God. Amen. Amen. That's so good. Here's a question, KJ. Kim, Kim, you want to ask, ask that question? So Kimberly Morris. is about to go there. I'm going to switch to a, uh, I'm going to switch to another uh, device. We'll bring you back in. We'll bring me back in. Wow. KJ? Yeah, that was so good. And I like that he, he brought that last point out there that it needs to be a consistent thing. Carla Morris, mm -hmm. she said earlier that self-care is a lifestyle. Yes, it's not just a a, 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 a a vacation or a vacation or, or a getaway. It's a lifestyle where you have to do that. And so I love, I love that he he shared that you know you yeah. probably need to take at least one day out of the week to where you you shut everything yeah. down. Maybe not the whole day, but at some point. I love that. It's very true. I hope that he's able to expound on. The importance of meditation and that there's a whole process because you it's important for us to hear from God. It's so yeah. important for you to understand the steps and where you are in the steps. Right. To have that one-on-one well, -on -one time. Kim, let me ask you this. Why is it when you do self-care, Kim Hall? I'm gonna ask, see, can you help Kimberly more? It's taken as being selfish and you begin to feel guilty. What would you say to her, Kim? She feels guilty. Or, or she's made to feel guilty. Mm -hmm. uh, well, selfish. I mean, I would say, first off, don't feel guilty about taking care of yourself because you are, at the end of the day, like my grandmother says, every tub got to stand on his own bottom. We come into this world by ourselves, we leave. So you have to take care of yourself, first of all. So don't feel guilty about it. And for the second thing, if someone is not trying to make you feel guilty about it, well, self-care is not something we vote on. <laughs> it's literally for you. Come on. That's <laughs> you good, don't have to man. vote on this. That's so good. You taking care of yourself is about you, not if everyone else is in agreement with it or if they're getting something out of it. So, That's good. Okay. That's so good. It's not a vote, y'all. It's, yeah. it's we that's good, Kim. We're not waiting on your vote. Kat, yeah. what would you say to that man? Somebody who's uh made to feel selfish. Because people will if you don't show up for them, mm -hmm. y'all, let's be real up in this thing now. Yeah. If at, you are as good to people, right? Yeah. As it relates to the fact that when they call, you answer. When they need you, you're there. So you, you're just as good as the times you show up. Any, any comments on that? Uh, and I see some yeah. of the comments. Pastor Mode, if you're ready, give me a thumbs up. Yeah. And, and, and I, I think that that you know it's important to make sure you understand that you communicate to them that if I don't take care of me it's not going to be good for you mm -hmm. because if you keep pulling and pulling and pulling and I keep giving and giving and giving and I have nothing else to give what you're going to pull on is something that you don't want <laughs> wow. and then I'm going to be the blame for it you know and so I have to be able to pull away so I can be able to serve you better. That's good. That's good. Yeah, Pastor Moses, man, people are really blessed. This, this self-care kind of has punched some folk, man, today. Uh, and, oh, yeah. and again, a lot of comments on that. Any other questions for Pastor Moses? Pastor Moses, we, because you were, you have such a great work ethic, man. And, and I've seen it through for over 20 years. Your work ethic has always been amazing. 
what was there ever a time when you when you took the first step to self care that you felt guilty or you felt like you were not giving your everything? What what shifted your your paradigm when it came to you know what? I'm still a good pastor. I'm still a good person, even if I took some time off. Was there something that helped you change that mindset of feeling guilty? You know, absolutely. Because to be honest, when you first start to do self-care, you feel guilty. And especially when you're in a profession like a pastor, there's always somebody to call. There's always somebody to pray for. There's always a meeting to be had. You know, there's always time to put your face in the Bible to study for the word. I mean, you're always going to have that. And so sometimes when you begin to take care of yourself, take that initiative, you feel guilty, you feel bad. But you know what really helped me was when we went through the pandemic and I saw the level of death and had to deal with so much yeah. grief and I could see how life was so precious. Uh, that's when the Lord told me one day in prayer, a dead you can't help nobody. Come on, so man. If you don't take care of yourself, eventually, you know, I mean, the other option is that you're going to wear out. I mean, and this is just not only mentally, but physically. I mean, oftentimes we're not going to get physical checks. So many of us sometimes may have diseases in our body we have no clue about. Sometimes, you know, we're not going to the dentist, but just simple stuff to do to take care of yourself and make sure your body is strong. We're not doing that because we're trying to be Superman or Superwoman. And as a result, I believe it's a plan of the enemy. See, some of us, the devil know, I can't get you with drugs. I can't get you with alcohol. I can't make you chill on your spouse. So you're going to do all that and do what's right. You hold it from that perspective. Come on, so I'll just wear you out. I'll just wear you down. I'll let you work yourself to death. That's good. Boy, the devil, listen. Boy, you see that? No. Come on, enemy. Come on, he, he didn't want nobody to hear that. Yep, he coming he back. He coming Amen. back. Okay, let me add him. Go ahead, Moses. Yes, it's a, it becomes important that you don't shut your body down. When you're stressed, your body can't fall off something. I heard, I read one article that said every morning we have, we wake up, there are certain cancers that linger in our body. But because our immune system is so strong, we fight it off. But when we're stressed, when we're yeah. burning, we can't fight it off. So we open up doors. And I'm saying it's a trick of the enemy. Here, go. rest is holy. It is. Remember, the Sabbath was holy unto God. He said, this is sanctified this day. They couldn't do nothing back in the, the, the Pentateuch. They couldn't do nothing back in the Bible, Old Testament. They had to rest. Couldn't, couldn't do, lift nothing up. It was rest. And God said it was holy. Now, we under grace, we take the principle of the Sabbath. And if we don't learn how to take a day and make it holy, then we don't do nothing. I'm telling you, we're going to mess ourselves up physically, mentally, and spiritually. Physically, we begin to wear out. Mentally, we begin to get drained, depressed. We got so much on us. Spiritually, we can't hear from God. I want the people to see the trick of the enemy. However, when we tap into the rest of God that God has made available to us, Hebrews says there is a rest for the people of God. When we tap into that rest, I'm telling you, man, it just opens up a whole other world for us. And you can't feel guilty about it. People going to be all right. My church going to be all right. My yep. kids going to be all right. You know, they're going to survive. And so you got to take care of yourself. That's good. Yeah, Charles, I'm, I'm going to try to get this question, Charles, because it is a Q&A Friday, man. I, I, I don't know if if the team understands this, but, but can someone expound on Matthew 14? When Jesus went to pray after hearing about John the Baptist, Jesus had tried to go and pray, but dealt with the multitude. But afterwards, he pressed before the walking on the water. Y'all remember that account there, I guess, Charles? Well, yeah, it, well, that's yeah. how they, oh, sorry, go on. But when you, when you go back and look at that that scripture, Jesus didn't walk on the water until after he went to the mountain to pray. Yes, yes. Right? So right. so what, what, what Jesus did is the scripture said he constrained his disciples to get in the boat. Mm -hmm. All right? So say, he, he, he said, okay, it's time out. We, 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 we're not going to serve right now. What we're going to do is we, we've already fed them. We already took care of them. Y'all get in the boat, go on the other side. I'm about to go to the mountain to pray. And when he went to the mountain to pray, he was revived. He was strengthened. 
He had time to take to do that self care. His That's disciples right. had the self care, and then here he comes walking on the water. That's right. Right. So, That's so you know, we we have to look at that in context, and and so we have to make sure we take the time to pull away, as Pastor already said, that you know, which goes to show that miracles come after rest. Come on here, Moses. It goes to show that miracles happen after rest. You tap into the supernatural. Y'all type that in. After you rest. I'm going to type that in for me, dog. Miracles come after you rest. And sometimes yeah. we can't get the miracle because we haven't rested yet. And I think, as you said, Pastor, that's so important. He went and took care of himself first, revived himself. Then he went and walked on the water. And many of us are trying to walk on water without going to the mountain. So we're drowning. We have to take that time because miracles come after rest. That's the charge. Yes, sir. Good God Almighty, Mark. That's the charge. <laughs> Miracles come out the rest. I know that for a fact. It comes out the rest. Wow. Only out the rest. Y'all, we had 303, 303 people live right now. This has been good. Listen, uh, we'll take two more questions for Pastor Moses. Uh, any other questions? What hit you today, y'all? Uh, what, what stood out to you today? Yeah, they type Miracles come out the rest. Y'all got that? Rest, rest, that's it. Well, Any Pastor, other questions? Pastor, Any other questions? To... Go ahead, Kim. <laughs> I just wanted to say, Pastor, that I really enjoyed everything, especially how you broke down the steps. Because do you think, if you speak to the who we have in the audience, could it be that sometimes we're selling ourselves short because we are not actually completing steps? <laughs> Absolutely. That's so good. Good question, that's so Kim. Good. That's so good, Kim. I think absolutely true. Uh, sometimes the trick of the enemy is not to give us the follow through. Um, you know, success comes with follow through. And so sometimes we do the meditation piece. We do the preparation piece. Then life get busy. We stop right there. And we never pick up into the administration piece. We never organize our lives. So I think there's a word that is discipline. You know, we have to be disciplined when it comes to our strategy. That's how you be a steward of your strategy. Because now, this is how I see it. God gives you the strategy, but the rest is up to you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some people are waiting for God to give the strategy and then to just do everything. Yes. And some people are bad theology again. They think that, hey, it's all up to God. When God said, no, you have a part in this. You know, we're going to partner with this. I'll give you the revelation for your life, but you got to work those steps of meditation, preparation, administration, uh determination, all of that celebration to get to the manifestation. And if you skip one, you'll mess the whole thing up. Mm -hmm. So you got to be diligent. You got to be disciplined. And that's my prayer for somebody, that somebody just works the process. I'm telling you, if you work the process, you will see the favor of God. And that's what I like about God. God will give you enough light for the next step. He won't mm -hmm. show you all the light for the whole process, but he'll give you enough light to take the next step. Because mm -hmm. God is not always giving you the details. I've learned that. He'll just give you a little light to make your next step and to keep going. But if you keep going through the process, you will eventually get to the uh, end goal. Wow, that's good. Awesome. What stood out to me, uh, she said, it's not selfish to put me first and to rest my mind and soul so I can have a clear mind to hear God. That's good. That's right. That's right. You don't work the process. The process will work you. Yeah, that's right. Work the process. That's it. Work the process. Yeah. Work the process. Listen, y'all, I'm going to have Pastor Moses to, to share anybody who's discouraged. Yeah. Anybody who's down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let him share a few words. But before we do that, Pastor Moses, I'm going to go on and put this out there for everybody today. Uh, Project Coast to Coast Gas Pop-Ups. Pastor KJ, five states we're going to bless. Uh, we're going to we're gonna be next Saturday. We're going to be going out. Uh State to state, coast to coast, and we're going to bless. We're going to bless people. Pastor Moses, we've given over ten thousand dollars, man, in outreach from gas wow. to rent to mortgage to to helping with daycare expenses, man. So, man, God, you know has I love to, outreach. You know, I, I, know I, you I have a heart for outreach, man. I, I have a heart do. for it, and just right. to see what you're doing is amazing. Yeah, and as right. I said, you know. Oftentimes, you know, I know giving in the church has gotten a bad reputation, but, you know, don't let the world trick you on God's right. principles. You That's know, the so Bible good. says if you give, 
uh, it'll be given back unto you. You know, the Lord honors those that give. And so, Pastor, I just want to just congratulate you, man, and celebrate yeah. you for what you're doing. And I'm yeah. sorry, I'm a sucker for outreach. I can't yeah. hear about it and not do nothing about it. On behalf of FMC Faith Movers, we want to donate $1,000 to this gas drive. Can we, we're going to donate $1,000 wow. to be able to help somebody. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a sucker for outreach. When I see it, I have to sow into it. I have to give into it. Wow. Knowing the difficult times there are, knowing how tough things are, uh, it's hard on everybody, wow. you know? That's and good. so we have to bear each other's burdens. So I just want to give and sow. And I encourage everybody, give at your level, sow at your level, because I'm telling you, man, you're not giving nothing away. You're not. Right. I wish I had time to testify. You're not giving nothing away. Every time you give, the Lord the, of the harvest, he's yes. the Lord of the harvest. He's, oh, he yes. controls the harvest. He'll oh. make sure you get back what you gave. Press down, shake it together. So, you know, do yeah. it out of love. Don't do it to get some back. Do it because you love God. You want to be a blessing to others. But in return, God will take care. You're not, you're not losing nothing. Wow. You'll position yourself to be blessed. You're putting That's yourself good. in position to be blessed. Pastor Moses, we honor you, man. Y'all give God praise. A seed sown by my brother to yeah. this project. And Lord, uh, God. I need you to go follow Faith Movers Church. Pastor Moses, how can they follow you and see with their own eyes the magnificent work you're doing in that area, man? Well, you know, you can follow us on all uh, the major social media platforms. We're on uh, Facebook, Faith Movers Church, uh, Instagram, Faith Movers Church, Twitter. Of course, uh, you can follow us on there, our website, faithmovers.org. Uh, like you say, we're in the soft suburbs of Chicago. We'll be celebrating 11 years on the second Sunday in June. We're so excited about that. God has been so faithful, and uh, we're just trying to, you know, glorify God here at Faith Movers. So just thank you for the opportunity and the platform. We're just so humbled and grateful for it, man. I'm just, and I'm proud of the faith room. I'm telling you, man, I, I thank you for sending me the link. You always send me the link, and if I can't watch it right then, if I'm doing something, I can watch it in the evening time. I'm just always blessed. I'm, I'm, I want to support this move of God. Man, bless you, man. And I love you, brother. Thank you. Love Look, Faith Room, $10, $20. Many of you have already sown. There are people who drop their seed off to the to the church, which is fine. Uh, we are moving forward with our copyright, our business license. Everything is in motion. Applications mm -hmm. have been presented. We can copyright Y'all, so we appreciate everybody. $10 to $20, if you could do something, uh, we're going to bless uh, those who are in need. Before we leave, Pastor Moses, there are people, man, on the bridge. There are people who uh, just here, man, I have a funeral in two weeks, a suicide, man. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a 27-year-old young lady. And it never, the suicides never make the news. You never hear about people jumping off bridges or cutting, you know, cutting themselves to death. That's right. 27-year-old uh, young lady, man, hung herself, man. Oh, my. Oh, my. And, oh my. and her family found a note, and the note read how discouraged she was. Just on Monday, we had people typing in. They were, We had to put up the suicide hotline because oh. in the fake room, man, people were just, you know, pastors who are, you know, we have we have five churches in San Diego vacant right now, man. Five. Wow. We have pastors leaving the ministry, pastors stressed out, de death, sickness. So, man, I'm going to let you take last few minutes. We had 282 live. The last few minutes, Pastor, to just that person on the bridge, that person on the brink of giving up, that 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 mother, that wife, that husband, that pastor. What would be your word? To them as they go into their day, man. Well, you know, I first I want to, you know, acknowledge, you know, yeah. where they are. You know, yeah. oftentimes I think in church, sometimes in religion, we can beat people up for just feeling. Uh, we can beat people up for having natural emotions, going through grief, going through pain. I want you to know that uh, it's natural. Don't don't think it's strange that something is wrong with you or you're different because you're going through. But at the same time, I want to encourage you that uh, you are more than a conqueror. And uh, even in your roughest moment, I want you to know that God made us a promise that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And so God is with you. And so I want you to just take this time, as we said, do some self-care. If you're stressed, if you're overworked, anxiety, you're worried, 
take some time, man. Take a day off or just take time to just relax. Take time to stay home and watch TV. Take some time to take care of yourself. Oh, Secondly, sure. I would tell you, talk to somebody. Uh, there's nothing wrong with going to a trusted partner, uh, a, a trusted partner you can talk to. Go to a trusted partner or a trained professional, either mm -hmm. one. Go to them and talk to them. You'll be surprised at what happens when you release those things that you've been holding in. You'll be surprised how you feel free when you get you a good cry out. You'll be surprised how you'll feel so much better when you can just be transparent with people to say, I ain't got to fake, I ain't got to be honest. This is where I'm at. This is what I'm doing. And somebody who's going to lead you in the right direction. So talk to somebody. Take care of yourself. Talk to somebody. And then I'm going to tell you to keep pushing because God's not through with you yet. And if you're saved, if you know Jesus Christ, I'm here to tell you, you're supposed to win. You're more than a conqueror. You're supposed to be winning. And if you're not winning, don't feel bad about it. Work the process. And that's what I'm praying for you today. Work the process. Be not weary and well-doing. For in due season, you're going to reap if you faint not. God may be slow, but just because he's slow don't mean he's not serious. God will do what he said. And so I encourage you to take care of yourself. Talk to somebody and keep the faith. Your best days is ahead of you. Don't take your life. Uh, don't do it. That's the trick of the enemy. God loves you. God is with you. And I believe what you're going through today will be a testimony for somebody tomorrow to encourage them. And so if it's okay, uh, Pastor Nate, can I just pray? Absolutely. Who are Absolutely. Absolutely. Kind, kind Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray for those who are watching today in the faith room. We even pray for those who are perhaps watch this later on tonight or next week. We just pray for them right now, Father. Uh, we feel what we feel sometimes, and we can't help how we feel. And we're thankful that you are a gracious God, such a humble God, that you are God that can relate to us. You've been touched with all of our infirmities. You understand where we are. Thus, you've given us the Holy Spirit to comfort us. And so, God, we validate what people are feeling right now. We we understand what they're going through. And also, Father, we come to encourage them that it's not over yet. And so, Father, we pray that people will make, make the decision. And self-care is a decision. We pray that people will make the decision to take care of themselves, take a day off, get some rest, relaxation, to release the stress that's on them lives. God, we pray that you will put people in our life that can encourage us, that can support us. You can put people in our life that will be sincere, that will help us, that we can tell our business to, and they won't spread our business to everybody else. God put trained professionals in our path that will help us and walk us through what we're going through, that we may get to the other side. I pray for that. And then, Father, I pray for a spirit of determination to rest upon your people. We're not giving up yet. We are more than conquerors. We are supposed to win. We have the favor of God in our lives, and we decree and declare that we will see it through, that we will get to the finish line. Satan, we rebuke you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, get your hands off of God's people. We will get victory. So we decree and declare right now, Father, that it's already done. And even in the midst of the process, Father, we open up our mouths right now. Come on, somebody. Begin at home to open up your mouth and begin to give God praise. Come on. Right at your house, give God praise. Come on. Begin to open if you're driving. Come on. Open your mouth and give God praise. We praise you in advance for what you're going to do. And we thank you for it now. You're building our faith Hallelujah. in the faith room. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Thank Hallelujah. you so much, y'all. Listen, sow your seed. Also, we're going to sow a seed into Pastor Moses for his time today. Uh, we're going to make sure he goes to get a good lunch or dinner for his time today. And uh, so go ahead and sow into Project Coast to Coast. This is how you sow. The faith room one. Dollar sign the faith room one. And we are, of course, integral. We'll post, we'll share how your funds have been used to be a blessing to those in need. Y'all thank my brother again, Pastor Moses Heron. Go follow him. Thank you for being man, here. I love you, man. I know your schedule is busy, but I, pre I appreciate you so much for being love with you, me. Love you, man. Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate right. it. Faith Room, have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday with new content and new conversation. Talk to you soon. Take care, everybody. Peace. Amen.